Yo, what's up, my fellow artiste? I hope it's a good day for you. It's a good day for me. Got my coffee, got another drawing in the books, and now we're gonna talk about it. Mm. So, any of you guys that have been following this channel for a while now know that I have a history of drawing sharks. In the past, I've drawn a hammerhead, I've been guilty of drawing a tiger shark, a great white shark, and even a mako shark. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to focus on doing a drawing tutorial on a shark is because, unlike other animals, I feel like a shark does a really good job when you're drawing it of conveying the concept of form. Because there's the shape, which is the outside contour of an object, and then of course there's form, which is accomplished in drawing by building up tones and building value within your drawing to make it have that three-dimensional appearance in 2D space. So in this one, we got to use an image from Tanner Mansell from Tanner Underwater on Instagram. I tell you what, if you like the ocean and if you love sharks, definitely check this guy out. We'll provide a link to his portfolio on Instagram in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm excited for this one. I love drawing sharks and uh, let's get drawn. So for this one, we're going to be using a graphite pencil and a Huhu eraser, a Pentel Click eraser, and a Mono Zero eraser. We're also going to be using soft, medium, and uh, hard charcoal pencils. We're also going to be using a sandpaper strip. A number one, a number two, and a number three smudger. And we're also going to be using an extra piece of paper to check our tones. And last but not least, a brush. Okay. Now, as with uh, all outlines, it's uh, mainly up to you as to how you would like to draw them out. But for me, I like to focus on the uh, main lines and uh, shape of the reference image. So in this case, I'm going to start with the fins of the shark and the roundness of the back of the body. And just go nice and light. As you can see here, I just messed up, um, but I can just hit it with my Mono Zero eraser real quick because it's just light graphite and, uh, and get back on track. But basically, I like to call this framing in my charcoal pieces. Yes, it's true that we are sticking to the overall shape um, of the reference image, but basically what you want to pull from this step in the process is you just want to get down a nice um, cohesive shape and then that way you can lay out the framework for um, your contour and how you're going to be laying down your charcoal with different tones and different values so that you can uh, really sell the illusion of a three-dimensional form in a two-dimensional space. But here's a little trick that I like to do is after I have the main lines written out, I like to look at the reference image. I like to see all of the different breaks in tone from light to dark, and I like to highlight those real light with my graphite, just so I kind of have a basis and a framework for where those uh, darker tones go next to lighter tones when the time comes for the charcoal. And then here's one thing I wanted to show you. These are what I'm going to call uh, body contour lines. Now, of course, these aren't lines that you see in the reference image, but the whole point of these lines um, is for you to see what the overall form of this drawing looks like. This shark's body follows these contour lines. It's not something that you see um, blatantly, it's not in your face, but it's uh, more or less underlying form. And this form is paramount for you as an artist because 
you, this is the form that you need to keep in mind when you are laying down your charcoal. And if you have a thorough understanding of it from the get-go, then you'll already know where to lay down your charcoal and how to utilize your smudgers for when you're pushing and smudging that charcoal onto the paper. Okay, so we're going to take our excessive piece of paper and we're going to take some soft charcoal here on our sandpaper strip and just grind it on. We're also going to do the same with our medium charcoal. Okay, now we're going to take a number three smudger. We're going to grab some soft charcoal and we're going to very lightly start building those uh, lighter tones in the reference image. One of the reasons why we start with soft charcoal, of course, is because it has the least amount of binder in it, um, as opposed to medium charcoal, which has slightly more, and uh, hard charcoal, which uh, has the most. So the soft charcoals and the medium charcoals are the main ones that we use to build those initial layers of value within our drawing. And then the hard charcoal is what we use for all of our defined lines and uh, our detail work towards the end. That is of course the three layered method that we like to utilize on this channel. But now here you can see what I'm doing is I'm taking my smudger and I'm just very lightly sticking to that form. I'm pulling the charcoal across the paper and I'm following those contours. Now, I would have been doing this without those lines, but I'm trying to put these tutorials together in such a way as to where you can start to see the underlying principles of what I do and why I do them so that you have a, a, a fuller comprehension of uh, my approach. I'll grab some charcoal with my smudger. I'll test what the tone looks like on the paper, and then I will apply to my drawing. And as you can see, you can just go very, very lightly. Um, the smudger, after you put the charcoal onto the paper, you might, you may notice that aesthetically, it's not very pleasing. It's, um, the lines are very abrupt, um, but have no fear of that, because when we take our brush, we're going to be um, blending those different values um, together and we're going to get a really nice smooth look and those um, the harshness of those smudger strokes will go away but the most important thing to note when you're building um, your values with your different tones is just sticking to the contour. We're always remember in the back of your mind, especially when it comes to drawings that are going to have a form, uh, and you're and you're trying to you know sell the viewer on that three dimensional look in two dimensional space. That underlying form is crucial. Not to forget that. And with every tone you lay down, with every line you lay down, um, that should always be in the back of your mind. But here, as you can see, the light source on this reference image, the light is coming from above the shark. And so the whole top of the back, just very, very light charcoal. The only parts of this drawing where we're going to be pushing very hard and trying to get that really dark um, value is going to be on the, the belly and the, uh, the underside of this shark. Everything else, as we move closer to the top, we're gonna to be put pressing lighter and lighter. Um, the only parts where we're going to be pushing darker is where we have these um, these tone breaks with um, just the, the flow of the shark's body. But as you can see here, we have a nice lighter line um, on the side of this shark where we have darker tones um, above and then we have darker tones um, beneath. And what we're doing is we're just slowly um, building all that up. And the more charcoal you lay down, and the harder you press on top of charcoal that's already laid down, you will get a, a darker value um, from it. So the real um, trick and the thing to be aware of when you are utilizing your pressure control, if you want a value that's darker, just press a little harder. If you want something that's lighter, just barely graze the paper. 
And that's the big that's the big trick, the big thing to remember. But you can blend this as much as you want, but here is my favorite tool, the brush, of course. So one of the reasons why I like the brush is because it just, it blends everything together very nicely. It gives us a nice smooth gradation across our values. And it, um, and for sharks, being that sharks for the most part are extremely smooth in nature, it definitely helps us sell that look. So now here I'm taking some hard charcoal, I'm just going to put a defined line, a couple defined lines in here. And all this does is define lines as opposed to implied lines, we've talked about this in other tutorials. Um, I am a firm believer that you can use them um, in uh, a nice balance between uh, defined lines and implied lines. The, the balance is the trick of course, now that does depend on exactly what it is that you're drawing. But a lot of the times I'll just use defined lines to bring something forward or to push something backward or a culmination of the of the two. And I will be using more defined lines in the shark. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that and I'll go into more depth on that. But here's another trick that you can do that I wanted to show you. You can take and you can apply charcoal from your sandpaper strip with your brush straight onto the paper. Now, I recommend that you do this um, only after you've at least laid down an initial layer of soft charcoal with your smudger. You can just start laying down with, um, with the brush, but I think what you'll discover is that you're going to be using a lot more charcoal um, to get to the values that you want to get to. Whereas if you just laid it down with the smudger from the get-go, you would have that really nice base layer. And so you'd find that you'd be using less charcoal um, with your brush as time goes on. But here you can use smudgers to convey this darkness, this shade break on the shark's back, or you can use a brush. Um, I only use the brush when I'm trying to move very quickly, but that's uh, a preference is completely up to you. So now I'm just taking the Mono Zero eraser here and I'm just cleaning this up because I'm going to be putting in a defined line right there with my medium charcoal here in a second. Just cleaning all this up. Charcoal has a tendency to run away from me if you let it, so. But now here I'm just gonna take uh, my smudger. I'm gonna take some medium charcoal. So remember the big difference with the medium charcoal is that it has more binder in it, so it holds together more, thus giving you a darker value onto the paper. Of course we're layering and we're just building this up and we're really trying to get that tone to where we want it to be darker. So now I'm going to add a defined line here with my medium charcoal. And what this is doing is this is bringing that fin of the shark forward and it's pushing the body of the shark back. And now I'm taking the charcoal from here from the line where I ended it and I'm pulling it to the end. And the reason why I did that is I wanted to start from where the, I knew the line was versus starting from the tip of the fin and then bringing it back to the line. I, I have a chance of missing the line and having like a little bump where the lines converge versus pulling it straight from where it already came from. And now here what I'm doing is I'm looking at the darker tones first. And I'm laying the darker tones down on the fin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with a brush. And what it's going to do is it's going to blend everything together. So I'll have a nice gradation from the dark tones on the fin to the light tones. And the cool thing is, is I didn't even waste any charcoal with the light tones because I let the brush move the charcoal from the dark tones over to where I knew those light tones would be. And if it's a little bit too dark, you can hit it with your Mono Zero eraser and lighten it right up for the lighter tones. That's not a problem at all. Just a quick little trick. All the tricks that I'm teaching you guys are tricks that I've learned just over the years of drawing a lot. And um, I'm all about uh, simplicity and I'm all about having my tools work for me so that I can make the most amount of drawings um, as quickly as possible without, of course, sacrificing on quality because I'm I'm big on quality, and I'm sure you are as well. So now what we're doing is I'm just taking my smudger and I'm just kind of building up the end here. 
and just kind of, that's kind of adding to that that trying to sell that three-dimensional form and two-dimensional space now as you can see we have drawn the majority of this shark with smudgers the only real thing we even used a pencil for was the um, underlying shape and uh, contour of the shark but once you start to grasp this approach you'll start to notice that you hardly ever even use your pencils it's all smudger work it's all brush work and um, it gives you the ability to make some really cool drawings but what i'm doing here is i'm just taking these gills and i'm just i'm focusing on building up the darker tones first that's the big thing dark and then work your way to light and a lot of the times with your lightest values and tones that you have within your drawing you'll find that you don't even have to lay down charcoal of any kind you just merely have to hit the dark values with the brush that you already have and then those will blend into your light values very nicely but now what we're doing is as we're moving our way up the shark's body we're doing the exact same thing that we did behind the shark's fin we're keeping contrast in mind we're following those lines that we laid down initially and we're just building the form up of this shark and if you need to grab more charcoal go ahead and do that just remember what i always say when it comes to charcoal just slowly build it up kind of like cutting hair if you cut too much off it's hard to grow it back well if you lay too much charcoal sometimes it's hard to remove it okay now that we've laid out all that charcoal we're just going to take our brush we're just lightening this up we're just kind of blending it all together smoothing it all out we're just taking our model zero and cleaning that up and now what we're going to do is we're going to take a hard charcoal we're just going to put a nice defined line on the back of this fin but i don't want to put a defined line on the front of the fin and this is what I always talk about with the fine lines as opposed to implied lines remember how I always say it, there's a balance between the two you don't need to go all ham and put defined lines on absolutely everything same as with implied lines not everything has to be implied I believe there can be a nice 50 50 mix and it can give you a really nice drawing so here what I'm doing with my brush is I'm putting a, an implied line underneath the belly of the shark now I'm not going to put a defined line there and that's what I'm talking about that's that nice balance between defined lines and implied lines together if you use them in the right ways they'll give you a really cool looking drawing and what we're doing is we're just going through with our smudger and we're just very lightly laying out that initial building that initial value on the belly of the shark and all the while we're trying to remain true to form slowly but surely building and building and building and remember even though it looks gritty like this one does here and you're thinking oh man that that doesn't look good and remember we're going to be hitting this with a brush and we're going to be hitting it with even more charcoal with the brush after we lay down the smudger work so smudgers tend to be a little bit more abrupt than a brush does a brush is going to give you a much softer look so see here i'm going to take the brush and we're just softening this all up and it's blending all of this charcoal together so all those streaks that you see if you hit it enough with a brush it'll go away let's build that little piece there there we are okay but really it's up to you um a lot of this a lot of these techniques depend on the kind of aesthetic that um, you're going for and it depends on what you're drawing um, sharks tend to have a very smooth aesthetic so they require um, a lot of brushwork which um, isn't necessarily the end of the world a lot of times when it comes to building up um, your values and making sure that you have that wide contrast from complete white space to complete black space a lot of times you can accomplish that with all of your smudger work and then you just the brush works kind of like it's kind of like the 
at the icing on the cake. It's one of the last steps that you do, but when you finally do hit everything with the brush, it just gives it a very nice smooth look that um, is very appealing in the wake of how a shark actually looks. But as you can see here, we're just going through and we're just sticking to form or er everything that we lay down, every movement of our smudgers and uh, smudgers especially, um, we're keeping form in mind. It's always in the back of our mind. We never stop thinking about form. And now, um, especially with drawings, form is something that is hard to convey because it's only ever going to be in two dimensional space. But all these tricks that I'm showing you are um, going to help you with that. So here on the, the head of this hammerhead shark, we're doing the exact same thing that we did with the body. Those lines, those form lines that we laid down, where when we pull our charcoal with our smudger, we're making sure that we're following those lines so that that form, that underlying form is subconsciously sold to the viewer's eye. They see it even though they don't realize what they're looking at because the eye for them is trying to make sense of it. So it's your job as the artist to understand what you're doing principally when you're drawing so that you can um, basically convey all that for your viewer. And then here what we're doing is we're taking some medium charcoal and we're building the darkest values in the reference image, which in this case are um, the nostril of this shark along with uh, the eyeball of the shark. And here we're putting in the teeth and then the inside of the mouth of the shark is extremely dark so we're just going to fill this in and then we're just going to take our brush and we're just going to blend. We're hitting our charcoal um, extremely lightly a couple passes is really all it takes um, because you can always go back and add more um, charcoal and thus uh, a greater difference in value but here is um, a perfect example of a defined line we're just gonna make sure that we put this down but we don't connect it and then here we're gonna pull that see that and what that has done is that has made that has brought the head of the shark forward from the neck and now what we're doing is rather than using a smudger, we're going through and we're building up um, the contrast in our values with our brush. And this is giving it that nice smooth look uh, that we like and that works, especially when it comes to sharks. And then here's a cool trick. When it comes to the belly, start from the bottom and then lift up. See that? And what that allows you to do is that... Um, allows you to really sell the the roundness of uh, the underbelly of the shark and then you can just go in with your brush hit it and soften it up real quick and you see how all those streaks are slowly but surely disappearing but yet you can still see the form underneath that's what we want that's that process that slowly we're slowly building up this drawing and then here we're just taking the, taking the smudger and we're just smoothing out these graphite lines that we laid down with our initial outline. And then we're taking our Mono Zero eraser and we're just cleaning up any charcoal that got away from us from the outline of our of our drawing here. And then this is kind of cool. You can take your Mono Zero eraser and you can go through and you can just start highlighting. What I, I call this adding detail by taking charcoal away and uh, it's something that can be kind of tedious in nature but if you just follow the flow and the underlying form of your image same as you did with when you were laying down the charcoal what you'll find is you'll find that you'll get a really nice aesthetic so like say here for example we're taking our mono zero eraser and we're can, and we're keeping that form in mind as we're hitting this charcoal. So not only are we adding detail, but we're, because we're keeping that form in mind, we're not taking anything away from what we've already laid down. If anything, what we're doing is we are enhancing all of the detail and all of the form that we've been trying to convey this whole time. But 
But as you can see, the Mono Zero Eraser can be very, very powerful, and it can do lots of different things for you if you know how to use it in the right way. But here we're doing the exact same thing on this. We're just keeping that form in mind. And if this looks a little bit too abrupt for you, if you don't like those harsh lines, you can hit it with a brush like we're doing here. I uh, hit it very, very lightly, and what this does is this keeps the Mono Zero Eraser lines that I just laid down, but at the same time, if I want to, um, if I want to blend them away, if they, or if I don't like, if they're a little bit too harsh, that's not a problem at all. I can take my brush, and I can soften them all up, and it'll um, give me the aesthetic that uh, that I'm going for. But that's the big thing that I want you guys to pull from these tutorials um, that I make for you is I just want you to see all of the tricks. There are many, many tricks. And just because I do something a certain way, that's not by any means the only way to do it. These are just uh, subtle little tricks that I use, um, subtle little techniques. But the biggest thing is just take techniques that maybe um, you need for your own drawings and utilize them and share them. Okay, but here what you can do is you can take some medium charcoal and you can just, there's some weird texture in the skin, so we're just gonna hit this real light. Kind of build this up. And this is really the trick in uh, in texture and, and form is, you know, how, how, how far do you go, right? Like how far do you, do you take the drawing? Because we all know that you can overwork drawings. So for me, typically when you lay down soft charcoal and then you lay down medium charcoal, you hit it with a brush, you add some detail work with your mono zero eraser, nine times out of 10, that's gonna be all you need to do. Because the three layered method was designed in such a manner as to be able to produce a lot of quality drawings very quickly, it it basically plays to that for you. Like you are able to only do a few passes and then you have a really nice aesthetic, one that a lot of people like, and you can kind of move on to your next project. But that's just one of those things as you draw and depending on what it is that you're drawing, you'll just have to make that decision for yourself as the artist. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope um, I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you were able to pull one or two things from it, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, your future drawings will be better for it. I love sharks. And I like how this one turned out. Voila. So, yo. That is pretty much it. That is the process that I follow when I'm building my tones and I'm trying to get that wide variation of value within my drawing. And those are some of the tricks that I use to convey form. But yeah, I mean, if you're just starting out and you know your drawings are not quite to the level that you want them to be at, don't stress. Do not stress at all. When it comes to drawing, it's, it's an evolution, it's, it's a process, it's a, it's a journey. And it's not necessarily about creating the best drawing in the room. It's simply about creating a drawing that you had a lot of fun making. That's what drawing's all about. So just remember that you should always have fun. And the moment you're not having fun, like I always say, take a break and come back to it. And I promise you, your drawings will get better. So that is it. That is all I got for this one. And remember, if you guys enjoyed this video and you know you find yourself enjoying all the videos that we make here at Messer Creations, um, I encourage you to like and definitely subscribe. Uh, oh yes, and be sure to hit the bell. Ding! 
<laughs> so you guys can be notified when our latest and our greatest videos come out. My name is Brayden, and you guys have just been tipped off. I hope you guys had fun, and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one.